I'll have to speed through this. I was going to want to watch this for this long. <laughs> I'm riveted. <laughs> you I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> my butt. It's like watching someone trim. It's like, okay, get the point. But you got to get all the air bubbles out. How do you know when to stop? That's just something you just know from practice. When you throw your clay and you find that there's air bubbles in it, you <laughs> wedge it enough. Right. That's how you know. Also, you can see the air bubbles pop when you're wedging it. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit too much work for you to come out. So. You've been wedging for almost three minutes now. Okay. To the wheel. that even when I was in here I had my my hands bridged mm. at all times whenever possible no matter what you're doing always bridge your hands I'm gonna bring this in a little bit and I have an air bubble but I'll get it out later so do you feel the air bubble or do you see it I feel it see it here soon. I see it yet. So. Mm. So, in order to keep it tall and keep it from flopping out, I'm continually bringing the top in. probably want to more of a this angle instead of overhead at some point. There it is. Uh, 
see ya. See ya. I think there's another one in here too. Mental note, don't use recycled clay for a demo. Mm. <laughs> Doing great. So, I'm just going to try and keep this tall and skinny by continuing to bring this in. And since this clay is kind of wet, I'm going to take some of this slip off and kind of compress the wall just to give it a little bit of strength. Help try and keep it from collapsing on me. We're getting some good height. Walls are still pretty thick. I have this air bubble that's sealed over. It's getting away from me. Remember. Okay. There we go. So, at this point, I probably switched to harder clay. At this point, though, in this particular piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape the bottom and then I'm going to create the neck. Now it's important to pretty much have your bottom done when you do the neck because you won't be able to get your hand back in there. It's important not to get too much water on the inside before you start making your neck. Now when you do your neck you're going to apply some pressure down on the bottom and it'll kind of make your form widen out a little bit so you want to not exaggerate your form too much so I'm still, this is a pretty thick piece that I belly out, I do trim the bottom. You see, I have there you go. so I have a nice bottom shape there. So my shoulder is going to start about here. Now, as you bring the clay in, it's going to create more height. I'm already starting with an uneven top. And your top will get uneven. You just cut off the uneven part. It's okay. So before you start necking, you just want to make sure that there's no water in the bottom. Because once it's in there, it's going to stay in there. And you want to make sure your hands aren't too wet. 
then you'll just get a lot of water in the bottom of your pot. And you'll want to do this part gently. And you don't want to apply pressure down. You want to apply pressure in and evenly. And I'm kind of doing it from both sides. And then as you bring your neck in, the clay will thicken up and then you can pull a little bit. is very uneven because I had a bunch of air bubbles in it. Normally I would not suggest you try drawing big forms with all recycled clay. It's just a matter of kind of bringing it in and pulling it up. You just want to make sure not to apply pressure down because if you apply pressure down, you'll warp your bottom shape. So in and up. And hopefully you won't have to cut too much off the top so you can keep all your height. And you can see where I pop the air bubbles. I'm creating a little wrinkle. And so see this whole shoulder was just created by bringing it in and up. I haven't introduced any new motions. I'm still in and up. I don't know. I think I can make that a little bit taller and skinnier. Let's see how far I can go. Now, you know, your fingers are only so long, so and kind of, when you get something you can live with, you think it's good for the shape. Kind of, be careful about pressing down and compressing your rim here. You don't want to collapse your shape. And you know, sometimes on my really tall, long, skinny bottles, I actually trim their neck when it's leather hard because I can't get my fingers in there at a certain point. And also it just prevents it from warping when you're working on it. If the neck is a little bit thicker, it's not a big deal to trim just a, an eighth of an inch off. And then I just clean up my form. You want to be careful about this part. You don't want to collapse your form. But you do kind of want to even out your trim ear pulling motions here. And this part you want to be really careful about because it's really easy to snag your 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 neck and send it flying. If you can put your finger in there to support it, do that. And that's pretty much how you throw a bottle. And you clean up your bottom. It's, you saw me cheat and clean up before to take some of the chunk out, but uh, officially where you're supposed to clean up the bottom. And there you go, it's the bottle. Wanna, ah! <laughs> <laughs>